We have explored the stability of the nucleus in the previous lesson. So let's look at unstable nuclei. Unstable nuclei may have too many protons or too many neutrons. And this would upset the nuclear force, which then result in radioactivity as accidentally discovered by Henry Becquerel around February 26, 1896. There are a number of radioactive processes. Let's start with the alpha decay. Alpha decay is basically a result of a large nucleus emitting two of its protons and two of its neutrons, which is the same as a nucleus of a helium atom. An example of this would be radium-238 with 92 protons, which decays to thorium-234 and an alpha particle, which is just a helium atom. Another type of radioactivity is called the beta decay, and there are two types of beta decays, the beta minus decay and the beta plus decay. In a beta minus decay, a neutron turns into a proton plus an electron, and in a beta plus decay, a proton turns into a neutron and a positron, hence called a positron emission. Beta minus decay is called an electron emission. The general equation for the beta minus decay is shown as well as that of the beta plus decay. And let's take some few examples. Carbon-14 turning into nitrogen-14 plus a beta minus particle, which is just an electron. An example of a beta plus decay is when carbon-10 turns into boron-10 plus a positron and a neutrino just to balance off the masses. We also have what we refer to as the electron capture, which is when a nucleus captures one of the electrons and turns a proton into a neutron, and this results in emission of X-rays. We can take an example of potassium-40, which captures an electron, turning into argon plus X-rays. We can also have a spontaneous fission reaction, which is when a larger and stable nucleus splits into smaller nuclei. This can result in either a stable or another unstable nuclei, plus neutrons. Take an example of uranium-235, which turns into barium plus krypton plus two electrons. Note that the mass number always stays the same. Fission reactions can be spontaneous and can also be as a result of uh, a nucleus capturing a neutron, hence resulting in a chain reaction. Fission is when the smaller nuclei combine to form bigger ones. And this is usually associated with enormous release of energy. Let's take an example of two hydrogen atoms combining to form deuterium. A hydrogen with a proton and a neutron. Here you can notice that a proton is turning into a neutron. And this happens by beta decay. Deuterium can also be added to a hydrogen atom to form helium-3 and the two helium-3 atoms can also combine to form a more stable helium-4 atom. It takes about one billion years for the first line. The second one is quite prevalent. It takes about four seconds. And the last one, finding another helium atom or helium-3 atom, that might be a half-life of 400 years. These processes are accompanied by huge supply of energy, and this is how the sun produces its sunshine. The time it takes half of a radioactive material to decay 
is called its half-life. Let's take an example. The half-life of iodine-131 is 8 days. How long will it take 1125 grams of iodine-131 to decay if you start with 1200 gram? The ratio of the final amount to the initial amount is the exponential of a constant multiplied by the time it takes the decay to occur, where k is lin 2 over the half-life. Combining the second and third equation, and then substituting the values, you get the time of decay to be 32 days. What fraction will remain after five times the half-life? Here we can use x is equal to one over y, where y is the number of half-life. It takes 35 days for 512 grams of an element x to decay to four grams. Let's find its half-life. Half-life is the ln of 2 over k. And you can see that by simple computation like this, you can get the half-life to be 5 days. 11 tree has a carbon-14 decay rate of 13.6 counts per minute per gram, while an old piece of wood has a C14 decay rate of 3.4 counts per minute per gram. Okay, there's a living tree there with a decay rate of 13.6 and a dead piece of wood with a decay rate of 3.4 counts per minute per gram. Now we are required to estimate the age of a piece of wood if the half-life is 5730 years. Okay, to do this, we use the formulas as we've done before. And by pure manipulation of this equation and substituting the given values, you find that the tree has been dead for 11,460 years. In summary, uh, we've learned that when a nucleus has a deficiency of protons or neutrons, um, it will shut off some of the excess protons or neutrons by a process called radioactive decay. We've got different decay types. The alpha decay, which is when a helium atom is emitted from a nucleus, and um, that is very dangerous to a human tissue. It is the least penetrating, can just be stopped by a piece of paper. However, because a helium atom is the heaviest of all particles emitted, it stops hard, and it can cause a lot of damage in a human tissue. And we've also looked at the beta decay, two types of beta decays. Uh, the beta minus decay, which is an emission of an electron. It's also called an electron emission. And we also learned about the positron emission, which is when a positron or a positive electron is emitted from a nucleus. We've studied the electron capture which is when a nucleus captures an electron, thereby emitting X-rays. We didn't speak about gamma emission, but uh, just in passing, gamma emissions are a result of an excited nucleus that goes back to the um, ground state by emitting a highly energetic electromagnetic radiation called the gamma ray. And we've also looked at the spontaneous fission, um, which is when a big nucleus is not able to hold its nucleons together and it decays by splitting into daughter nuclei and neutrons. And we've said that this can be a chain reaction because you might find that the emitted neutrons will further cause the 
daughter nucleus to decay in the same way of fission. We've looked also into fusion where small nuclei like those of hydrogen combine to form hydrogen 2 and those combine in turn to form helium 3 and the two helium atoms combine to form helium 4 which is a process that we've alluded to how the sun operates. We've then looked at the different half-life calculations of these radioactive processes till we meet.